Welcome to Photoshop for Photographers. What I'm gonna basically be doing is creating these 10 minute videos. Now there's a very important reason for 10 minute videos. I don't want you to get too much information too fast. The retention value just is not that high if you get too much information. The goal here is to learn something and then apply it and then practice it. Then once you've got that, move on to the next thing and you should build up as time goes over. By the end of the course, you should dramatically be able to improve your skills in Photoshop and also learn what's exactly relevant for a photographer to learn inside of Photoshop. I will just be showing you some basic skills and then some advanced skills as well as time goes on. And if you ever have any questions or ideas for videos, please leave those in comments below. I can always get back to you and make specific videos even if they don't fit in line with these Photoshop for photographers, it's just as easy for me to put something else and place it in a different location. So the first thing that we need to learn here in Photoshop for photographers is to basically open up this program. And then we need to get the settings and the design of this set up exactly how you want it. Now I have this set up how I work, but you need to set up Photoshop how you work or what design makes you feel most comfortable. If you come over here and you see this little rectangle, so we have the search in this little rectangle and this box will drop down. You can see I have some custom ones here, but there's essentials, graphic design, photography, painting, motion, 3D. Now notice photography. So this is Photoshop for photographers. If I click this, it's gonna give us a default setup for photography. And what this is giving you is just some of the basic windows and palettes that you are most likely gonna be using inside of Photoshop. Now you can configure these however you want. It will probably take you a couple weeks until you've used Photoshop before you can configure these. But once you have, you can always go up here and hit new workspace and then you'll end up with something just like this in which I have. Now I have a lot of palettes off window. I'm using a second computer. As you can see, I have all these on a completely different window and that's fine. If you have another monitor or a different way to set this up, you can, but I'm actually using more than what you see. And as I'm working and doing these videos, I will bring some of these palettes over in here so you can actually see them. So it's a good idea to actually create your own workspace, but for now you can easily just go into photography and use the default. In the videos to come, I will explain what all this stuff means. But if you ever see this little arrow, this little arrow will close this. And if you come up here and click this, it's gonna open the whole column of window. Notice we've got one, two, three different things going on here but if you click this, it will open and close those windows. That's how that works. If you go in between, so we have properties and paragraph here. If you go in between, so notice that my mouse right now is an arrow, but when I get in between those, it gets a double arrow. If you click and hold with your mouse, so click and hold and then drag up or down, it will change the size of that window. Some windows won't allow you to do this, but most will. So if I come down here and I want to change the size of this, I can change the size of that. If you want to stack sections, basically I'm going to take paragraph and put it up here with properties. I'm going to take my mouse, click and hold, and then drag it up in here. So notice now we have tabs of two different options of items that we can use. And you can put multiple um, tabs inside of a window. It really just depends on how you want to do it. You can also take these out and create a new column. So if you get, notice there, you see how it lights up blue vertically. So we have this vertical blue window. That means it's going to create a whole new column. So I'm going to put that there and you can see once again, it's a whole new column. Now, when I close that, it's its own little column. So if you want to create an own column, you can do that. And just like you could go up and down vertically, you can also go horizontally and extend those window sizes. Now, if you're working on a one computer or a laptop, you're not gonna to wanna to go too far this way because then you're not gonna have much room for your photo. 
but that's basically how you can control and navigate and move these windows around. Come over here and I can click this, I can click this one. So we have windows here. Eventually you're gonna get this all set up exactly how you want. If you wanna get rid of a window, you can either do it one of two ways. You can come up here and hit close, or we can see right here, this is library. All these panels, windows, and little tabs are located in, under window. So if there's something I don't want here, like libraries, there's libraries right here. Notice that has a check mark. If I go there and uncheck it, it's going to disappear. Same thing with pass. If I want to get rid of pass, I can come down here, uncheck it, and it's going to be gone. The next little window is this toolbar here. Now this toolbar sometimes is two columns, but I have it one single long column. And just like the windows over here, you can actually move this. What I did is I went right up here into this gray space and it allows me to move this. If I want to put this and lock it into the side of my window, I just go until I get that blue bar, just like we see and let go. And now it's going to be part of this window that I'm moving around. And that's basically how I want it. This is called the toolbar. If your toolbar ever disappears, it's because you hit tab. Tab will make those panels disappear. Tools right here, unchecked and checked, is that bar right there. So another reason if you can't find your tools, it's either tab or you have accidentally unchecked tools and this will come up. That's basically what you're gonna need to know as far as controlling these panels, windows, and toolbars over here. The next thing you're going to do is go up into Photoshop and go down to preferences. Now, most people don't think to actually ever go here, but this is an important thing to set up before you ever work inside of Photoshop. Now we're gonna go over here and I will explain some of these, but 95% but of this is all default. I'm just gonna tell you and explain a few of these in which I'm changing stuff. So preferences, and you can read any of this. If you wanna auto update open documents, you can do that. If you wanna disable the home screen, any of this information, if you want to change the way in which Photoshop works, you can either check or uncheck this information. I don't have anything in here changed. Interface, color theme. So right now I'm using this color theme, but if you wanna to change to this color theme or the light color theme or the darker color theme, feel free to change that. Standard screen mode, default drop shadow. I have all this stuff as default. English, that's gonna be my language. Options, show channels and color, dynamic color sliders, show menus. Everything I have on this page is default. Workspace, everything I have here is default. Tools, everything in here is default. There are some things that you might wanna check out. So if you wanted to zoom with the scroll wheel, which I, would, I don't use, but if you wanted to do that, you could obviously check that. But feel free to read through and make sure you know what's going on. History log, I basically have as default. File handling, so you can look here and check to see what I have. Prefer camera raw for supported raw files. So these are my defaults. The next is export, or in this case, quick export. And so these are my quick export settings. You do want to convert to sRGB. We have not got into color management yet, but the web uses the color space of sRGB. Now I will be working in Adobe RGB, so I definitely want to convert everything over to sRGB. Performance, now this is where stuff is gonna most likely be changed, and I will explain some of this. Memory usage. Photoshop is a memory pig. The more RAM you have, the better. If you want it to run more efficiently, you can slide this up. However, remember that the rest of your computer needs memory to run. You need to leave some so other programs or just the basic system can run. I have a graphics processor on my computer that is somewhat substantial. Now, Photoshop doesn't use the graphics processor a lot. In some cases, it does use it a little, but just in case I need to use it, I have used graphics processor since I paid the money to get one on this computer. History states. What a history state is, is as you're working in Photoshop, Photoshop remembers what you're doing. And you can go back in time as you're working. So if you mess something up and say, 
you know what? I wish I was back at this state when I was toning this photo. It's going to allow you to do this. So I have mine set at 50, meaning I can go back 50 steps in my history state. You could do 100, 200, or 3. The higher the number, the more memory or cache your computer is going to be using. You can set this. It kind of depends on how you work. If you are just doing simple photographs and toning, you don't need so many. If you're going to be doing very complex, multiple layered images, then you might want to set this higher. But that's something you just need to know that it's there. This, I all have the same scratch disks. So what a scratch disk does is allow you to use external hard drives as a scratch disk. So if you need more space to work on images, you can designate one of your hard drives as scratch disk, which you can see I have done. So cursors, so we can decide how we want our cursors to look. Any of this information right now I have set basically the standard way. This is all standard units. Now I come in here and I change this sometimes. Sometimes I'm working in inches and then sometimes I actually prefer working in centimeters. So I'll usually go ahead and check that stuff out there. This is all default right here in plugins. This is all set up as a default type is default. 3d is default. We will not be going into three dimensional type most likely as a photographer, but it does exist and I rarely use it. Enhanced controls. So if you have any enhanced controls that you want to change or adjust, you can do there and technology previews is basically by default. So those are the preferences that I have inside of Adobe Photoshop. Well, this is gonna be the end of the very first video. It's very simple. We're just going over the basics of how to set up Photoshop and how to control what it looks like before you start using it. And the next time we're gonna go ahead and learn how to open an image and start going over what these different items are over here inside of the toolbar. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.